The next presentation dealing with the topic high efficiency large PEM electrolyzers. Come here and welcome with me the engineering director from Gina, Manjit Hamdan. Give him a big hand, please. Thank you for that introduction. Uh, so our uh, topic of discussion is uh, high efficiency, large scale PEM electrolysis for hydrogen generation. Uh, I thought I would give you a, a short uh, outline of our presentation. Uh, I think many of you know who we are, uh, but I'll give you a short overview of our company and the technologies that we develop. Uh, I'll talk a little bit about the new membranes coming to market, uh, the efficiency of these membranes, uh, performance, lifetime, and durability. Uh, I'll talk about some of the innovative stack designs that we're implementing uh, to reduce stack cost uh, and cost uh, of the balance of plant and uh, systems. And then I'll talk a little bit about the development work in our large-scale large PEM electrolysis. Okay, uh, Giener Inc. is a uh, U.S.-based company. Uh, we're located in uh, Newton, Massachusetts. Uh, Giener was founded in uh, 1973. Uh, we specialize in the research and development of PEM-based electrochemical technologies. Uh, you can see some of the technologies on the right. Uh, it's not only PEM electrolyzers, but also fuel cells, electrochemical capacitors, oxygen management concentrators, gas sensors, gas sensors and uh, regenerative fuel cell systems. Uh, we've uh, experienced a, an accelerated growth in the last 10 years or so. Uh, our key driver has been the manufacturing of PEM electrolyzers, two OEMs. Uh, we are a uh, global leader in PEM-based electrolyzers. Uh, the highest, uh, we can provide the highest efficiency for commercial applications. Uh, and uh, we are um, <clears throat> a small company with about 65 uh, people. Our core mission here is to provide innovative PEM technologies at the highest efficiencies and at the lowest cost. Uh, since we're talking about uh, PEM electrolyzers, uh, I thought I'd, I'd show you a few of the electrolyzers that we manufacture. Uh, they can range from very small electrolyzers, uh, 50 centimeters square, active areas, all the way up to very large uh, electrolyzers, one meter uh, square uh, in active area. Uh, they could be single cells, very small cells, or very large multi-cell stacks, up to 250 cells, uh, shown on the top here. And they could operate at very uh, low pressures, 1 to 2 bar, all the way up to 350 bar, so around 5,000 PSIG. Uh, our stacks are operated in different uh, operating modes. I've listed a few here. Uh, differential pressure uh, is, the, is the typical uh, means of operation. Uh, we do uh, operate uh, or we do manufacture these stacks in balanced pressure. Uh, this is uh, if the customer sees a uh, value for the oxygen content, uh, they'll do something like that. Uh, typically, you'll find that the PEM uh, stacks operate in an anode feed, but we also manufacture cathode feed, vapor feed, and uh, static feed uh, electrolyzers. Uh, these help reduce your, uh, simplify the system and help reduce your balance of plant components. Uh, electrochemical uh, hydrogen compressors and uh, oxygen concentrators are also manufactured at Giener. Uh, you can see some of the systems on the right uh, that we uh, place our stacks into. Uh, most of these systems were uh, developed at Giener. Uh, they're typically used for on-site hydrogen generation. Uh, however, there are uh, vehicle applications uh, used as well. Uh, you can see the blue system is actually a uh, prototype system for a uh, fuel cell vehicle refueler, 350 bar. Uh, these are onboard uh, vehicle uh, refueling uh, systems for unmanned vehicles. Uh, a lot of our stacks go into uh, laboratory hydrogen. Uh, there's about 25,000 of those stacks out in the field today. And uh, many of these stacks, are they have to be very reliable. So you can see that they're being used on uh, onboard uh, U.S. Navy submarines for life support. All right, so let's uh, change uh, gears here. Uh, so I wanted to talk a little bit about the new membranes that we're developing and that are coming to market, uh, the performance, efficiency, lifetime, and durability of these membranes. Uh, so Giener has been uh, manufacturing and fabricating MEAs and membrane electro assemblies for the last uh, 30 years. Uh, one of the most recent uh, developments at Giener is the dimensionally stable membrane. This is a, a high efficiency, um, high strength membrane. It's fabricated with a support material. Uh, there's some supports shown on the right. And it really depends on uh, the commercial application of which support is uh, used. Uh, they could be 2D or 3D in nature, but in essence, they uh, provide uh, very high strength for these membranes. Uh, so there's no X and Y dimensional change uh, when these membranes are put through wet and dry cycling or freeze-thaw cycling, uh, hence the name, dimensionally stable. 
Uh, the membranes are can be optimized for thickness and ionomer equivalent weight. So thinner membranes typically give you the, the higher performance, higher voltage performances. Uh, lower equivalent weights, uh, they perform better, they, are, they have uh, higher ionic conductivities, however, they're weaker, but with, uh, imbibed within the support, uh, we can enhance the strength and use these for different applications. Uh, one of those applications is for high pressure, uh, so this is an enabling technology for uh, high pressure uh, electrolysis. Uh, we do have a roll-to-roll -roll process uh, with a uh, large commercial manufacturer uh, that's underway. And uh, you should see uh, some of these membranes out in the market by late 2015, uh, early 2016. Uh, so let's take a look at uh, some of the efficiency of these membranes. Uh, you can see uh, the two top membranes here are uh, dimensionally stable membranes compared to a, a commercial standard, all operating at uh, 80 degrees C. Uh, and with the DSM membranes, we can achieve uh, between uh, 87, 86, 87 to 90% uh, efficiency on the higher heating value. <clears throat> and that's about 44 to 47 kilowatt hours per kilogram at relatively high current density, so at 1500 milliamps per centimeter square. Uh, a nice thing about these MEAs is that they do utilize a low loaded catalyst. Uh, if you compare this to our legacy hardware, we're about 90% uh, re uh, reduced catalyst loadings within these uh, membranes. Okay, uh, we evaluate these membranes uh, for a lifetime. Uh, so uh, this typically requires several thousands of hours. Uh, typically we'll take a, we'll, we'll scale up the, the membranes, uh, put a five cell short stack together, operate that for a thousand hours, disassemble that stack, look at uh, the membrane, investigate the membrane, and then put a single cell back together and operate that for an additional four or 5,000 hours. <clears throat> and this is what we did here with the DSM. Uh, you can see that it was able to maintain its efficiency of around 88% at 1,500 milliamps per centimeter square. Uh, one of the things that we like to do is look at uh, the ionomer lifetime by looking, by looking at the fluoride release rates. Uh, not many uh, PEM manufacturers do this. It's something that we uh, routinely do. <clears throat> uh, typically, in your perfluorosulfonic acid ionomers, you have about 65% fluorine. Uh, when you lose about 10% of that inventory, that would be considered end of life. However, you can operate these uh, membranes for much longer. But in order to achieve that 10% loss, you would need to operate this membrane for at least 55,000 hours. Uh, the membranes are also um, tested for their durability. Uh, so we do this under very aggressive testing, high temperature, high pressure, and high current density. Uh, you can see uh, the figure on the left here. Uh, this is a pole scan that was taken after 1,000 hours of operation at 5,000 milliamps per centimeter square of continuous operation. And you can see that uh, the voltages are relatively low, again, at 1,500 milliamps per centimeter square. You're in that 1.7 volt range. <clears throat> uh, these membranes have also been tested for 5,000 PSI operation. This is 350 bar. And we've also tested these membranes uh, for 24 hours continuously at 10,000 milliamps per centimeter square, nonstop. Uh, you can see on the right here uh, some more degradation results. Uh, so in a typical operating mode, a nominal 1,500 milliamps per centimeter square, you're looking at around 55,000 hours. Under these very aggressive conditions, the lifetimes will be, will be reduced. Uh, you're looking at under 5,000 milliamps per centimeter square high temperature and pressure. You're looking at uh, 10 or 12,000 hours. However, what we've been able to do here is add an additive to these membranes. Um, typical perfluorosulfonic acid membranes, they'll degrade uh, with a peroxide radical that forms when hydrogen and oxygen enter the membrane in small amounts. Uh, that peroxide radical uh, breaks down the fluorocarbon backbone. If you, could break, if you can uh, consume that radical before it breaks down your uh, fluorocarbon, then you can extend your life. So that's what we've done. We've added an additive in this advanced DSM, operated that at 5,000 hours, and we're and still able to regain that, uh, we regain that performance. So we're able to operate that for 50,000 hours. But Take, take a step back. If you were to operate that at the nominal current density at 1,500 milliamps per centimeter square, then that life would be increased significantly. So you're looking at 150 to 200,000 hours of operating life. Uh, so what do these uh, efficiency and durability numbers mean? Um, they don't really mean much unless you could put a number to it. <clears throat> So uh, one, of the, one of the things to take away from this slide here is that uh, your efficiency is going to be uh, key to your cost competitiveness. Uh, so take a look at a hydrogen refueling station. This is a station that would operate at 3 megawatts of power. It would um, 
produce 1,500 kilograms of hydrogen per day. And if you look at the, the cost component for the hydrogen production, you're looking at about 42 to even higher than that for the cost of electricity to produce your hydrogen. Uh, if you look at the figure on the right, a commercial standard membrane operating at the nominal 50 degrees C would be about $3.50 per kilogram of hydrogen. Operating at, uh, with the Gainer PEM, you're looking at $2.80. Uh, so you can see that this could be a significant uh, cost reduction, especially when the systems become larger. When you're looking at the megawatt scales, your savings are going to be more. Okay, I want to talk a little bit about uh, some of the innovative stack designs that we're implementing to reduce uh, the cost. And I'll talk a little bit about our, uh, our development in high-pressure electrolysis stacks as well. <clears throat> so the stack that you see here is a 30-norm stack, but they're also manufactured up to 90 norms, so that's about 250 cells. Uh, you can see the, the cost reduction in the last couple of years. <clears throat> Just from 2007 to 2012, there's been a 60% cost reduction. Uh, many of the, the means of doing that are shown on the right here. Uh, we've been able to reduce um, our uh, catalyst loadings. We've increased our active areas to a factor of two. This basically decreases the number of cells. It, re it helps reduce your labor content in assembling. Uh, all our uh, plastic components are now molded in these stacks. <coughs> uh, there's a 30% uh, material reduction. Uh, alternative low-cost uh, non-repeating uh, units, such as the end plate, those have been reduced as well. And uh, the part count. Uh, in our legacy hardware, we had uh, 41 parts per cell. So in these cells, these are uh, large multi-cell stacks. Each cell had 41 parts. We were able to reduce that down to 10. This year, we'll be at seven parts per cell. Uh, if, you took, if you take a look at that, back to that four-court station, so we're talking a megawatt scale again, uh, how many parts uh, using this platform would it take? So you're looking at 20 to 30,000 parts. So it's still a significant, uh, significant amount of parts. So the next, uh, the next step here is really to increase the active area and reduce the number of cells and, and the overall parts. Uh, a few things about this stack. This uh, was uh, commercialized in 2011-2012. Uh, it was uh, one of the first to market at uh, 47 kilowatt hours per kilogram at 1,700 milliamps per centimeter square. Uh, it does have a rapid market penetration, so it's being sold in uh, several countries. Uh, it says here, product exclusively used for renewable energy applications. Uh, we're not selling it uh, for only for renewable energy applications, but the customers have only used it for that. So it's a, um, you can see where the market's heading uh, to these much larger systems. Okay, so this is some development work. This is not a commercial stack. Uh, it's a high pressure electrolyzer. We have uh, three or four designs in-house. <clears throat> this design here is uh, operating at 5,000 PSI differential pressure, but we also uh, manufacture these in 5,000 PSI balance pressure. Uh, one of the advantages of high pressure PEM electrolysis is really for the upcoming uh, mobility market. Uh, fuel cell vehicles require 30 H35 refueling and H70 uh, refueling, so 350 bar and 700 bar refueling. Uh, so these uh, high-pressure electrolyzers are going to be um, very important. Uh, so th they will eliminate the one or more stages of compression, so it uh, simplifies your system. Uh, it, it, operating at high pressure simplifies your system by reducing the, the amount of water that you need to drop out, so it's lower drying requirements. Uh, there's low maintenance. These are solid-state devices, no moving parts. There's no oil, so they can't contaminate a fuel cell vehicle, uh, vehicle's uh, fuel cell. And then there's cross-cutting technology that's uh, applicable to uh, electrochemical hydrogen compressors. Uh, one of the enabling technologies here is that uh, dimensionally stable membrane. It's very strong under large clamping forces. The membranes don't extrude, so you can maintain your seals. Okay, uh, you can see here a uh, system that was put together by Giener. This is a fuel cell vehicle home refueler. Um, you can see that the systems can be relatively simple. There's not many uh, components in here. <coughs> It does operate at 350 bar differential pressure, 5,000 PSI. Uh, however, there still remains some challenges uh, with these systems. Uh, the higher cost of balance of plant components, these components are just not available on the market. So we spend a lot of time uh, fabricating these in-house. Uh, some of these uh, components are the gas dryers, the, the phase separators, and the level sensing. Uh, uh, in addition, uh, extended durability testing needs to be conducted. No, no real company wants to take the liability for putting one of these out there without understanding all the, the operating scenarios of these systems. Uh, the, at these very high pressures, uh, there's an increase in back diffusion. Uh, so we are developing uh, new membranes 
uh, to reduce that gas permeation. This is uh, with the help of the Department of Energy. Okay, so how do we uh, validate our uh, stacks and systems? Uh, we do this through third parties and national labs. Uh, you can see uh, testing here of a uh, system that was put together um, uh, by Giener and uh, Parker Hannafin. <coughs> uh, the system is being tested at NREL. Uh, it was validated in 2012. It operated at 1,500 to 1,900 milliamps per centimeter square, and they were able to show uh, from their figures, 87% uh, efficiency on the higher heating value at uh, 1,500 milliamps per centimeter square. Uh, when, we, when we put these systems together, we're not only looking at the stack efficiency, but also uh, the system, the balance of plant uh, components, the cost and the efficiency of those components. One of the major components here was the development of a hydrogen dryer. Uh, this is our, these are typically regenerative um, desiccant dryers. Uh, and in the market, you'll see these uh, with a loss of hydrogen of 10% or so. Uh, we were able to reduce that down to about 3%. Okay, this is a validation of just the electrolyzer stack by one of our customers. Uh, so this is, this is uh, being done by Ariva. They've um, uh, been kind enough to allow us to talk about it. Uh, so they have several of our stacks. Uh, last year, they confirmed 2,000 hours at uh, 47 kilowatt hours per kilogram at 1,700 milliamps per centimeter square. Uh, you can see their use for the, for the stack. They're actually using it in a uh, regenerative fuel cell system uh, that has energy storage capability of 0.2 to 2 megawatt hours. So basically when uh, they have intermittent renewable sources, uh, solar panels, uh, windmill, they'll pass that excess energy through the electrolyzer, store it in gases, pass it through their fuel cell, and send that electricity back to the grid when it's, when it's needed. Okay, I'll talk a little bit about our uh, large scale, uh, uh, our, our scale up of, uh, of the PEM electrolyzers. Okay, so uh, large scale electrolyzers. So we've initiated a in-house program to uh, uh, scale up the electrolyzers to megawatt, uh, to, to the megawatt scale. So why are we doing this and, and what does it really mean? I mean, we've already uh, manufactured large scale electrolyzers up to one meter square for the chloroalkali industry. Uh, but we're doing it uh, for, for this purpose uh, because the, the market really demands it. Uh, you can see some of the market drivers in the U.S. It's uh, the Department of Defense, uh, which must produce 25% of, um, uh, of their energy from renewable sources by 2025. Uh, the European Commission is a little more strict. Uh, by 2020, 20% uh, 20 share of the energy has to be from renewable energy, 10% 10 uh, uh, share in transport. Uh, it's a little more, uh, a little bit more aggressive uh, toward the 2050. It's about 75% uh, toward the renewable energy uh, of renewable energy uh, for for your uh, final energy consumption, and 80% reduction in uh, greenhouse emissions. Uh, so these target markets are, are relatively large. They can be uh, intermittent uh, renewable energy source integration, backup power, uh, mobility is coming soon, uh, and power to gas. Uh, you can see some of the progression of our stacks. Uh, 15 years or so, I mean, it would be very difficult to find a commercial electrolyzer, uh, uh, a very large commercial electrolyzer. So you can see uh, we've started off with the 50 centimeter square electrolyzers, uh, producing 0.05 norms per hour. Uh, this moved up to two to three norms per hour. Today it's, it's up to 90, 90 norms per hour. And these are still uh, small electrolyzer stacks for the applications that are, are coming up. Uh, so we're now uh, moving to a 220 norm electrolyzer stack. So this is about one megawatt of power in a single stack, and this would be the minimum size. You can see, you can see some of the design work here. Uh, so these uh, increased outputs require uh, larger stacks. It's very difficult to design a system with multiple stacks. <clears throat> so we've in initiated our in-house development of the megawatt scale electrolyzer. Uh, we are going to leverage uh, work that we've uh, implemented in our previous stacks. Uh, this includes the reliability, efficiency, and cost. And uh, you can see that these stacks are still, for PEM, for PEM applications, these are relatively small uh, stacks. They have a small footprint. Uh, this stack here is probably less than two feet in height, two feet in width. So I know my time is running out here. Let's, uh, I'll wrap up. Uh, so in summary, uh, our capabilities uh, continue to grow uh, to meet the new market demands. Uh, we've been able to increase our membrane efficiency with new membrane development. 
Uh, we've uh, developed new electrolysis uh, stacks and system for high pressure applications to meet the mobility and storage markets. Uh, and we're increasing our, our, our hydrogen output uh, to meet the new uh, markets in renewable energy. And these are with uh, the megawatt scale uh, production. <clears throat> uh, efficiency is going to always be key to competitiveness, especially when it comes to these larger uh, megawatt uh, systems. Uh, that's, uh, that's one thing to take away here. Um, and then uh, the reduction in capital cost is also going to be required uh, for these uh, bigger systems. So uh, to conclude, I think PEM electrolysis uh, is a very viable uh, technology uh, that will be highly efficient in the large scale PEM electrolysis uh, markets. Thank you very much. So we thank you very much for this informative and interesting presentation. Are here any questions right here in the audience? Not yet. Okay. Thank you very much for being here. Don't, don't go away so far. <laughs> so I think your um, booth is uh, quite near. It's right here over there. So if you uh, come a little bit later or any question in your mind, I think you will welcome you. Yeah. Lab. We're right across the hall, so please come and visit us. Okay. Thank you very, Thank you very much. much.